brief introduction about myself and about Brass Out Loud. My name is Rebecca Carew and I am one of the founders of Brass Out Loud. If you're not familiar with what Brass Out Loud is, we are a brand new organization that is running a workshop in January. Um, and our mission is to highlight those who feel underrepresented in the brass community and kind of you know take control of what we want this community to be and look like and not just be you know the standard you know five people that we see we want to we want to make this a more inclusive and homely space for so many so many people so brass out loud we are having a workshop in january and i just want to have melissa tell us a little bit about our faculty and who we have here today Yes, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a great week, uh, despite everything that's been happening in the news. Uh, my name is Melissa Munoz, and I'm a trumpet player and educator currently based in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm a student, and I'm super happy to be a part of Brass Out Loud uh, with my fine colleagues and our esteemed guest, Billy Hunter, today on Bold Chat. Before we begin, I just wanted to give you all a bit of a faculty rundown that we'll be having in our January workshop. So in score order, we have trumpet, uh, Dr. Rachel Samayoa, Jennifer Moroda, Kiku Collins, Billy Hunter, Chloe Rollins, Ronnie Marsalis, Brianne Borden, Megan DeJarnet, and Kate Amron, who's right over here to my left. Uh, on horn, we have Alex Shuhan, Jeff Scott, Jeff Nelson, Julie Landsman, and William Purvis, and Miss Rachel Jenkins. On trombone, we have Nicole Abisi, who we heard from recently, uh, John Rojak, who we'll be hearing from soon, Martin McCain, and Abby Conant. And then on tuba youth, we have uh, Reginald Chapman, Carol Yanch, Chanel Crishlow, and Charles Villarubia. Uh, we have a really great faculty lined up, and the schedule is absolutely amazing. For more info, check out BrassOutLoud.com. And now I'm going to pass it over to Kate. Hello, everybody. My name is Kate Amron, and I'm a trumpet player and educator based here in New York City. So I'm going to talk a little bit about registration. So as everybody mentioned before we want you yes you to come to brass out loud in january it's coming up we only have a month left and we also only have three days left of our kickstarter and all of the funds raised from our kickstarter are going to be towards paying the amazing faculty and helping everything that's possible to run this workshop so any support is totally appreciated and as I mentioned, registration is happening. We want you to come, you and your students. And registration closes January 7th, so please get on that if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone who has registered and we're so excited to meet you and all of that good stuff. So um, we are so grateful to be sponsored by some really amazing organizations that I think almost everybody knows about we're, we're going to tell you about anyways so thank you so much to yamaha robinson's remedies shires eastman and ar resonance for sponsoring brass out loud this year also thank you to in memory of manas valeru for their donation as well and yeah i think that's just about it all that i want to mention we're gonna post the links to register in the kickstarter below so you can definitely get on that and without any other further ado, meet Billy Hunter. So can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing as a musician? Sure. Uh, uh, thank you for having me on this uh, uh, interview live on Facebook. Um, uh, real excited to work uh, with uh, Brass Out Loud in January. Yeah, so uh, I'm a native of Austin, uh, Texas. Um, my earliest musical experience that I can think of uh, is, is when my, uh, my mother uh, dropped me and my sister off to our babysitter. And our babysitter, uh, she was a really lovely lady. She sat us, she's really, I mean, we didn't really like go outside and do anything crazy like that, but uh, she basically sat us in front of the television and we watched MTV all day. And so uh, my, my, my earliest musical education is watching um, 80s music videos. 
<laughs> and then, uh, you know, much later on, um, uh, I, I grew up with the, you know, um, education system in Texas, um, which was uh, yeah, very, very, very nice. Um, um, I never really had like a, a formal um, private teacher, but uh, um, I was so lucky and fortunate uh, my journey through um, my music as a young musician, uh, having really great teachers um, from my um, uh, junior high school uh, assistant band director, this guy, Leon Prowsey, I don't know, maybe Melissa, you know, you know hang in Austin. He's a, yeah, I'm not even sure if, he, if he's teaching anymore, but he, uh, he was a person who introduced me to, I walk in the band hall and he's playing this Maynard Ferguson. I'm like, what's that? And like, that's what got me practicing. And so, you know, after that, you know, I just kind of trying to start trying to figure out and, um, well, what to do. And, um, like many, um, I could never really afford like a, a good trumpet. Um, but, um, and, and so for me, it was always kind of like a like climbing an uphill battle. And, um, uh, when I went on to do my undergraduate at, at UT Austin, uh, my teacher there, Ray Crisera, um, you know, I would complain about my trumpet. It's like, oh, you know, your trumpet, um, it doesn't matter, you know, you should still be able to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and sound beautiful on it. And so I was like, hmm. And he like picked up my, my um, Jupiter trumpet <laughs> and, and played, and sounded like amazing. And so uh, that that kind of like put me in the right like headspace uh, to to get prepared, uh, you know, for what was coming next. Um, uh, throughout high school, I, you know, I really, I didn't like, I mean, I currently play in the, the opera, uh, the, but I mean, before that I was, you know, the, my, aside from the eighties music videos we would listen to um, uh, gospel music, you know, when my, you know, mom would like take us to, to church and like, uh, and like uh, whatever was on the radio kind of, and it wasn't in, so later in, and whatever we played in band. <laughs> and my band, my high school band director was an amazing person, this guy, uh, Gary Faust, he is a great, ed sorry, that's my two-year-old <laughs> knocking at the door, the door's closed. Um, anyway, um, he was a you know, fantastic uh, educator and like a, really like inspiring and like um, uh, he would always play different things for me. And but uh, oddly enough, in high school, my Latin teacher uh, was the person who introduced me to like classical, classical music. Um, uh, like uh, I, I, it was, um, if I remember correctly, um, a situation where the they made announcements of who made all state band. And I was like, Billy Hunter made the all state band. Yay. And so he heard the announcement. And so the next day when I walked into my Latin class, he was playing Mahler five. And I'm like, oh, I'm like what, what's that? I had never heard it. He goes, you haven't heard this? I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, he goes, you made, you made the all state band, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. And so he proceeded to make these tapes. Hopefully, you all know what tapes are. You know, so <laughs> we made these, we made these tapes, and I, and I would just like, you know, I had a, a tape player, and I just tapes of all sorts of music from Bach, you know, Wagner and stuff like blah blah blah. Anyway, uh, and so that was my like first intro introduction to like um, um, uh, the classical music that you know uh, most of the, the orchestra in in this country uh, play today. And so uh, then, you know, uh, my uh, edu education at, you know, UT just expanded. I used to go to Tower Records and buy two, at least two CDs, one jazz, one classical, and then um, maybe three or four others. Like uh, I would buy rap, uh, rock, and actually some, some, some country music because I was in Texas, you know, it's a Texas thing, I guess. But um, just, just, you know, expanding my musical like ears, you know, listening to kind of everything. And um, yeah, and I mean, that's just basically a, kind of a generalized, you know, what I kind of grew up uh, music wise. Um, uh, and, oh yeah, trumpet. Yeah, I did listen to some trumpet. You know, my, my uh, I, I listened to a lot of Maynard and Winton. 
<laughs> I mean, those. I mean, if I were to pick main and win, you know, Murray, Sandre, all that stuff. But uh, that those were my main two <laughs> uh, players that I, that I listened to and, and tried to and like. You know, for me, like seeing Winton, someone, you know, uh, 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 a, a, a black person playing classical music at an extremely high level was like like mind blowing. And um, and, and so what I did, uh, discovered as I got you know later and later, you know, New World Symphony and playing with these different orchestras that I played with, it's like, wow, there's like so few, like uh, it's mostly, this industry is mostly white male, you know? And um, <laughs> like, what? what's going on? And and so for me, it was like kind of a, uh, like an eye opener. It's like, well, this is some something that I have to do, um, like uh, for so many different reasons. So anyway, that's my basic, um, uh, musical education. I can kind of go on, but I'm pretty sure we have a time time limit here. So maybe we should um, um, move ahead. Okay, well, I, thank you so much. Oh, Melissa, you go. Oh, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, I, I definitely know that it means a lot to see somebody who looks like you doing what you want to do. So um, it's really important that that exists and that we have a wide variety of people in these positions. Uh, so definitely relate to that. And I just had one follow-up question. Uh, I know sure. that Ray Cressera is such a legend, and uh, I wanted to know if you could speak to um, our viewers who don't know who he is, about your time with him, and about who he right. was. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so Ray Cressera, um, uh, he's kind of like, I, I would say two different, he had two different careers, right? His, uh, uh, before he started teaching, he was like the New York, like call person back. Uh, he, he was, um, back in the like forties, fifties and stuff, the recording industry was all in New York city. And so he was like the top call guy, um, for commercials, um, TV shows, jingles, movies, blah, 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 blah. He's played on a variety he played on a variety of um from frank sinatra to to kiss no no it's alice cooper it was like it was either alice cooper or, i can't remember which one but he all these like you know, things you wouldn't like even think about and he was on a disco track for, for a couple things he played in the nbc symphony under toscanini in fact in his studio there was a picture of um toscanini on a swing with a letter saying to the great Ray Crisera, thank you so much for your, you know, uh, I can't remember exactly, but something to that effect. <laughs> and like in some room, and I always wonder, who is that in the swing? You know, just kind of kept it on the, and it, it was Toscanini. And so he, you know, Toscanini, the NBC orchestra, and he actually played at the Met for a couple of years before he uh, went and, uh, to play in the army band, I believe. Um, and so, you know, huge, huge, um, uh, like very, and there's a, you can hear and see him. There's a, Glenn Gould did a, um, a, a series where he recorded all the Hindemith sonatas and uh, the, the trumpet one is Ray Crisera. If you uh, Google Ray Crisera, uh, Glenn Gould, Hindemith sonata, it'll, it'll pop up. And so, um, but after that, you know, he, he went on to, to, to teach at uh, uh, UT Austin for for many many years and like and had like absolutely wonderful students and a like strong studio and such an a, a, um, uh, a, a teacher that we kind of like you know don't see these um, well, well I mean uh, he he um, for me on a personal level he um, he always uh, like. Um, uh, expected like the highest level of um of work to be done uh from you as a student and um one of the funny things uh, he was very disciplined and so when my freshman year when I went in he was like okay let me hear your warm-up blah 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 and so he's like okay I want you to do this and he wrote out a warm-up like a lip slurs uh warm-up and so you know you walk around the halls you hear these lip slurs and they all sound the same and so many years later, we were compiling, uh, one of the, his ex-students were compiling uh, um, uh, 
uh, Ray Crisera uh, teaching methods, right? And so, so, so what did, what books did you did you learn from him, and what did this? And, and it turns out every student had a complete different like um, um, uh, learning method. Uh, for example, the lip slurs. Like I thought my lip slurs, everyone did them, but I talked to three different friends of mine who were in the studio at the same time, complete different lip slurs <laughs> that he wrote out, you know, and I'm like, whoa. And so it's like kind of to say, you know, well, what's, what's your teaching method? His teaching method was like, he teaches whatever the student need, which was what made him such a great teacher. Yeah. So that, so it was a little bit about Ray Crisero. He's a, you know, his, um, you know, when I um, was leaving to, to go to Juilliard, um, you know, and, you know, he knew, you know, he was just me. We always like talk trumpet, but he knew, you know, it's like, well, you know, my, my living situation, because I didn't have like a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, you know, New York's really cold, you know, so you're gonna need a jacket. And so he gave me this overcoat that I found out later was his son's. I'm like, he's like, well, his son's not using it. So, and I'm like, whoa, was like, <laughs> such a, you know, really personal, personable, like, like teacher and like really like cared about his students, you know? So two careers, you know, very, you know, like prominent playing career and a prominent teaching career. Hopefully that answers your question. Said, yeah, that totally answered our question. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Billy, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about your job now. So you've been principal trumpet at the Met since 2004. And could you talk to us about your audition process and how you've developed as a player um, right at the Met. right right so yeah the so it's a uh, uh so when i won my position at the Met, you know it was probably i don't know my 29th 30th audition or something like that and so i had like a whole um uh process i had been getting you know pretty close in finals and and things like that but uh, um um yeah, I, I didn't, you know, for me, it's like, well, I needed something to like break the plane. And so I discovered this like meditation thing. And so I'd start doing a meditation and that's what kind of uh, put me over the edge. But like um, my actual, <laughs> so my, my um, the, for my med audition, I have to like, um, the, the story of my Baltimore audition is what I really prepared for. Uh, and so my preparation consists of like um, getting like the excerpts right ahead of time. Um, and breaking them down. So, like, uh, for example, like Petrushka, and break it down, just play it with the, the metronome at half tempo and just play on one note, just to get the rhythm and the time and breaking each excerpt down, like, to that level. And so, um, basically, yeah, I did that for this Baltimore, as a couple, is Baltimore and Grant Park. Uh, so a, a second trumpet and a third trumpet position, they're all happening at the same time. And so I just kind of compiled both lists. So I had to play like some high trumpet and some low trumpet. And I did that with all these excerpts. And like, um, and so I ended up uh, winning this Baltimore position. And so it's like, yay, you know, I got this job. And, and, um, and uh, you know, the, of course, the mat was like around the corner. I was like, oh, I guess I might as well audition for it. But, you know, so my Baltimore and my um, uh, Grant Park auditions playing for people, um, the trumpet players, you know, like different players, colleagues, um, you know, uh, just kind of around. Um, and then when I got to the <laughs> my, my med audition, I basically um, just played the, the um, I had taken one other med audition previously that was completely not prepared for. But um, the list was similar, so I kind of knew it. And I was like, I guess I'll take this audition. But I had no pressure, you know, like no, you know, like that I have to win this. And so I was completely loose for the, <laughs> the whole audition process. And so um, my, um, I, I basically just, you know, played for my, um, my wife, you know, who was, I mean, she was, she was mean. She was like, why do you sound like a saxophone? My 
huh? Well, you play it, you know, <laughs> type of thing, you know, but I, you know, I, and so, yeah, I played the, yeah, I kind of, I knew the, all the excerpts because I've, um, I'd listened. What, one of the things when I was in high school, the Latin teacher, um, the, this is kind of ties it all together. He, um, so he played these tapes, right? And um, I'm like, this is great, you know, this is wonderful. And he, and then so finally one day he came, comes up to me, he's like, yeah, do you, you know, do you want to like, come over into my house and just listen to some music and you know me you know <laughs> being from the east east austin i was like huh excuse me <laughs> and so i'm very you know it's like and so i was like yeah sure and he's like you know I'm, i don't have a ride and so he's like, oh, i'll pick you up you know so we went you know and i was like what's this guy gonna do is he gonna be like some like hatchet you know axe murderer or something anyway um <laughs> we get in and it, like um in you know this guy was he was like a chain smoker you know it was like anything uh very strange but he was like it was like he I, I he was sitting i sit in this recliner chair and he proceeds to bring out these like files of like like um like just big folders like this thick and like wide and they're all like uh like um it's like a, a bibliography like a, a listing of all the music and and books and things because he was a uh, also an english teacher and he would give me things to read like uh persephone electra greek tragedies and things so i'd read i was into that stuff you know king arthur you know i was really into king arthur and so he was like hmm. have you heard of this this parsifal it's like when you vaguely related to the story and i anyway so long story short he started like playing opera for me and so i listened to a bunch of opera at this thing, you know, he had an unbelievable stereo setup. Like <laughs> I'm sitting in this chair, like, oh, what is this? Like I've never heard this. Yeah, you know, I was just used to, you know, you know, Lincolnshire Posey, you know, or, you know, which is great. I love, I love. You know. But uh, anyway, um, so I kind of I, I knew a lot of stuff, and I've done it. When I was in New York, I did a couple opera gigs, and I, and, and and making money in the summers. Uh, when I was at New World Symphony, I played in like opera orchestras, like Spoleto Opera Orchestra, uh, Ashland Opera Orchestra. <laughs> that was all the all the gigs at the time. So I kind of knew Italian opera and uh, and um, um, German opera. So anyway, back to the audition. So I played this stuff, um, and my wife just happened to study Berg at school, so she knew all the themes and stuff. She was, oh, this is when you play this, this is what's happening. I'm like, oh, okay, you know? And so I had like some association. And so I, you know, I went in um, and, and and just kind of played loose. And that's like my story of like, um, like the opera. I, and, and I was like, uh, you know, I wasn't worried about, you know, my chops. In fact, the, the before the the prelims, I had a, I, I did B minor mass in uh, in Miami and then took a flight and then <laughs> and played and played the you know the first round you know but I was like ah, Matt I don't care you know? <laughs> but uh, but it was uh, you know it was just having the sense of playing free you know being and that's like a hard thing to kind of grasp um, you know when you're when you're trying to get it you know um, but once you once you get a hold of that you know it's like easy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Um, I think that we could all play a little bit more free. I definitely have trouble doing that. So I will take <laughs> that into my practice session today and apply that. <laughs> um, moving on to our next question. I know that you have a family with small children and was, <laughs> was wondering how you handle being a busy parent and musician. Yeah, um, it's a, so, you know, I... It's, it's me and my wife I actually have uh, two older sons. Um, I have a, a 12 year old and eight year old and two two year olds, right? Two little like twins and like, uh, and it's a whew, definitely a handful. Um, and so basically, you know, me and my wife, we her parents are, are here with us. And so they're kind of our nannies. Um, and so we, we have a, on our wall, we have the schedule you know, typically like, a, let's say the operas, you know, we have it in schedule, like boom, 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 this day, all right, from this time to this time, I have rehearsal. This time, this time, my wife teaches, you know, so but the kids have to go here and here, like two different places after school. And so it's a, 
color code it. It's like, um, you know, um, being, being organized is like a huge thing. Um, and, but maybe having the balance of like, you know, um, it's like, well, if you gotta like have time, one thing's been great with the, um, you know, the, the, the pandemic, it's like, well, you know, we've basically been eating all of our dinners and, and things together, you know, um, which is something we, we didn't think about before, like uh, before is like, all right, you eat, you go, you eat, <laughs> go, go, go. But, but now it's a little bit, you know, you know, uh, like different. So it's like kind of a different feel, you know, um, but you know, it's a, it, it's a, for me, I'm like constantly trying to like get the balance of like, well, I got the music here, but we have like the, the family here, you know, and it's a, and it's always changing. Like, and so once again, this is where my <laughs> meditation comes in to, yeah, to not like get stuck in, into one position, right? To kind of be malleable with uh, how things float, right? And so, you know, with that philosophy, you know, um, like when this whole thing happened, I was actually already out because I had to have like a surgery. And so yeah, I was out uh, uh, probably a month before that, you know, everything else went dark in uh, New York. And then, and for, and for me, it was like, well, just kind of like preparing like for change. It's like, you know, life moves on, right? You know, and it's always changing, right? Nothing like remains like uh, the same, you know, the one thing is um, um, Michael Tilson Thomas actually talked about it. He's like, when he conducts, you know, the music, when you're performing, it's like, he goes, well, don't think about like, what happened in the past? Oh, did, was that note in tune? Was that, it's like, it was like, oh, I hope I don't miss this or the future, you know, to stay in the present, right? The now, he used to call it the now, which is a really, you know, it's like, and I, it, at the time he said that, I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> but it's like, well, this is like really like, like profound stuff. He's, you know, like staying in the now, the present moment, you know, and having balance of like learning from, from the past and, and planning for the future uh, type of thing. But that uh, as far as like family life and like trumpet, you know, um, like I'll do things like trumpet wise, like we'll, I'll play wheels on the bus and, um, and, different ways like uh it's kind of like um when, when you audition for a, a cooking job it's like make, make make eggs three different ways right and so i'll do wheels on the bus then i'll then i'll double tongue it you know and we're all like you know play it lyrical in the style of stravinsky you know, different, different ways, you know, just like, just trying to, <laughs> just, you know, trying to keep it loose and like, you know, and not, you know, dancing yeah, with the girls, but then with uh, my, my older kids, it's like, you know, uh, uh, changing from them being like little uh, babies to, to look like almost teenagers <laughs> and like, um, like just you know trying to figure out things that, that relate um uh like to them and so i'll i'll try to like you know say hey what's a you know what's that new song you're 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 one of the songs they listen to is from this uh um uh, it's a, some video game and, uh and i'll so I'll, I'll try to like learn the notes on my on my trumpet you know by ear or something just to you know that stuff like that you know and but it's you know it's it's hard it's dif difficult uh but it's manageable but it's always changing and so um so uh, my philosophy is just like well just like kind of go with the flow you know and just make sure you know soon you know if one gets out of line just tap them back on course boom 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 and you just leave you know uh our job as parents is to you know all right this is the door this is the way this is how you do this blah 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 and to like teach them to like um, um, become responsible adults one day <laughs> while, while still enjoying their, their childhood. <laughs> I love that. I feel like people never talk about like how to be this like 
greater musician instead of just reading everything on the page and like translating it and like being able to play things by ear is so important and I know like I was never taught that at school and now I've been playing with some brass bands in the street and like that is what it is is playing by ear and like can you listen to the recording and then play it at the gig and like no one taught me the tune I'm just having to go and do that um so I just think that's like such an amazing valuable skill oh yeah that mean for me that's how I I you know like I said, I didn't have a formal teacher. And I, I actually tell my students, you know, it's like you, you, we get so much, it's like trumpet players, we get really into like, it's like, oh, the tongue uh, position, the pressure of the mouth and bah, mm -mm, and that you can get this. And I'm like, it's like, huh? It's like, uh, you know, you're, you're doing all these like technical moves and like, and you listen, you say, like, oh, it's a ta. <laughs> just let what, just try to imitate the sound, you know? I mean, that's how, like jazz musicians like get their sound. Like uh, you listen to like someone like Thelonious Monk. He's like, man, that guy sounds like, you can tell it's Thelonious Monk. But then you listen closer, it's like, hmm, he's got some 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 Duke Ellington in there, right? But then sometimes he's like minimalist. He's like, wait a minute, that's actually some, that's actually how Count Basie would play a solo, right? And then that whole old school slide piano technique, boom, dong, ding, 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 you know, this thing, da, 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 da. And like, um, it's one of the things Mr. Like Crisera was like, you know, um, he, you know, I so, saw, yeah, I get to, to UT Austin and he's, he's like, now are you playing in the Longhorn band? I'm like, ah, no, <laughs> he's like, just, and, and he didn't tell me to play in Longhorn, but he's like, now Bill, he's like, one of he goes, you, this is the time where you should, you know, do as many different things as possible. Cause you'll never know when you're going to need that skill. And I'm like, oh, all right, you know? And so, you know, because of that, I, I, I did a summer at Disney uh, the, in Florida. And I, in that, that whole summer, all we did was like dance. Dance, it was like a, almost a dance band. You know, we went play, play tunes and, and dance around the park. And, you know, and, and what I gathered from that is like, well, how do you like entertain an audience, you know, to, you know, get them involved and, but like, a, even with that, it's like a it's listening, you know, like using the ears and listening. And then, and I think about when I, you know, they asked me like play in like church, you know, and none of the musicians in the, the church were, where I grew up were um, like trained musicians. They like, some of them could read music sort of, but it was all, you know, someone would start singing and the, the pianist would find the key. And so, and then we'd play with them sometimes. So you have to kind of find the key and like tune around, you know, and that, that's, I mean, and, and that we really, you know, it's, and it's kind of ironic. It's like, what's the one thing you're supposed to do when you're a musician? Use your ear, listen. <laughs> and it's a, one of the, uh, well, these like uh, institutions, like when it, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just, we're really like hell bent on like, you know, gotta do it this way. And that. so, I don't know. Alternate, alternate ways of learning is, is, uh, is something for me, you know, as a teacher to them, exploring, you know, uh, how to use um, um, like different methods of teaching. Um, as, like I said, my, my teacher, you know, he, he had his way of teaching and that was like teaching each student individually. And so some students learn this way. Some, actually some students need um, more um, like strict, like uh, because they're very loose like this naturally right so it's like you, you uh job as a teacher is to recognize when you're like this or when you're like this oh. <laughs> but no. no right relax 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 you know all right i want you to put this blindfold on and trust me. <laughs> type of thing so i need some more water <laughs> I love that. I think we've all probably had teachers who were like, oh, you have to do it my way or else. And depending on who you are, that can, I know at least for myself, that was really challenging. And all I want to do is just like rebel against it. And I'm like, why can't you meet me like where I am? And I'm a different player than some of the other people in the uh -huh. studio. And I have different things to say. I have different goals. And so it's really great when, I mean, it sounds like you are obviously like this but it's really great when you get to have this relationship with someone who's totally on your side and like treating you and what you need um right yeah it's awesome absolutely 
And so speaking more about teaching, um, we are wondering how your performing and teaching has changed during COVID times and what you've been up to in those respects. Yeah, so the, the COVID, you know, for, with, like I, so I'm like still in New York here. Um, the, um, um, like April, uh, and, and now like the cases are going wee, <laughs> but, um, but in April it's really bad. You know, uh, my, one of my colleagues, uh, at the at the Met, who his locker was next to mine, he he caught the virus and like uh, and he passed away. Then another person I knew worked with, and so it was like very like ah, it's like it keeps you know what's going on. And so um, for me, um, th there was a thing that went on for first responders where they would have the musician. And if you're a musician, you just were not even a musician. You just, open your window at seven o'clock and like hit on a pot or something. And so I, I did that one day and um, it was like a Facebook thing, I think. And so, oh yeah, seven o'clock, blah, 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 blah. So I, I, I played something. I did a, a really kind of, um, um, it was a, it was the theme to um, Real, Real Madrid, I think, a soccer team, but, but it's a, it's a really cool tune, right? Anyway. So I played that, and then I, um, I, I, you know, I was going to a grocery store, and one of my neighbors, like, he's like, he's like, excuse me, he's like, he's like, was that you playing the trumpet? I'm like, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't. It, it, they're like, yes, yeah, that was yeah, sorry, I, I'm like, no, 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 no. So like, thank you, thank you. Can you, you know, like, please keep doing it because it's like so inspiring, you know. So for me, that was like, you know, during the COVID time, it's like kind of like my performance, right? You know, when you open the window and like so everyone can hear. Like, uh, and so it kind of, um, uh, for a while, it kind of caught on. And like at, at my window, when I look, you can see there's like another building with balconies and you eventually start seeing people come out with like, in one, one day, some guy came out with an amp and a guitar and did some like power chord. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right? But it was, it was really, you know, and then people cheering and stuff. So it was like kind of like a, you know, group community performance for me that, what I've you know done to like um, uh, help uh, you know ha uh, uh, supply the need for performing when we can't perform. Um, but the other things for me, I, I'm always like like trying to stay busy doing something. Uh, I'm just learning a bunch of different solos and um, uh, many projects that got canceled um, that are <laughs> like a 20, uh, like the summer of 21, 22. And I'm like, oh man, I hope they don't stack up. You know, but let's just do it all in one week. Ah! But um, it's just like practicing different things and just making sure, you know, like I see it this time as like an opportunity to like woodshed and like, it's like get better at a couple different things. And like, I started uh, uh, playing some, um, some, some Abersols again, my friend uh, pointed out to me, you can look them up on YouTube. I'm like, oh, and so the other day I was like, oh, all right, boom. So I was like, I'm start, all right, B flat blues, right? Then I'm gonna do F blues, you know? You know, I mean, it still sounds kind of square. But you know, whatever, you know, it's like, uh, it's fun to like, uh, just kind of play and like and be loose. And it's like, when, when I wanna do, uh, you know, I do my routine every day. You know, it's just, you know, I don't know, OCD. Uh, but that's that's how I kind of stay. Like, um, I mean, it, for me, trumpet's like my sanity. Um, and so, um, the, and I still love playing. So, you know, I, I have I do my warm up. I feel a little bit uh, more at rest <laughs> and relaxed. And so, um, but that's but the, the opening the window and playing outside you know that that for me was like uh, my big um you know where i stayed and in, in, engaged uh, performing wise and my you know and i've been like teaching all all semester you know <laughs> like uh, uh, with the zoom and it's like and the teaching through the zoom is um you know just trying to think of different creative ways you know to keep uh, the student involved you know um I'm, typically i play a bunch you know uh, and, and lessons, because I'm a very, like, like we mentioned before, like, you know, this is what I'm, you know, just copy me what I'm doing, you know, just what my teachers did for me and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, of course, you know, through the Zoom, sometimes it messes up. And so 
I've had to discover how to describe what I'm playing and hearing through words. Um, and, and that's a, you know, it works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't, you know, but it's like, you know, just go with the flow, you know, um, and it's an ever changing. And I think um, what's interesting as the, the get through the pandemic more, it's actually starting to get a little bit better with how people um, um, use their online platforms to communicate and do things and like uh, advertise. It's like um, 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 almost a new kind of like a, a new uh, niche or something like um, I, I think I think this is going to change the COVID situation is going to change how um, performances look, you know, like maybe venues. And I also think it's going to change um, uh, like the, how like schools, universities, music schools, how we think about uh, presenting performances and like, um, but, but the main thing is like venue. It's like, it's like, well, I think maybe uh, we'll start seeing more um, like outside stuff. Um, like um, the Grant Park is all outside. Um, and there's a couple like outside, you know, it's great for the summer, but like, you know, creative ways, you know, I don't know what that is, but like, I, I think it's gonna like uh, turn into, I mean, like uh, 9-11, yeah. When that happened, it changed how um, uh, the world uh, traveled like in airplanes, right? And so this is gonna change like how how we, you know, I think even was already the the movie industry is like a like HBO Max is like it's like we're giving out all of our movies, boom, <laughs> one day, and so it's like so, I think that's gonna change that industry, but it's it's not gonna um, like get rid of it because I do uh, feel a sense that you know people's like oh we want human interaction, and I think um, this is it's a uh, you know. We're going to see a re resurgence, you know, once all the vaccine and stuff happens and, and, and all that good stuff. So, Oof. It's good that you're so positive about it. Um, I mean, everyone that we've been talking to is positive about it, but I'm also in New York and people can be really negative And it's especially with everything <laughs> online. It's really dark and it just like, oh, yeah. I don't like it, but it like soaks in and I don't want to be worried oh, yeah. and sad and I want to be hopeful like you are. So I hope other people yeah. are really listening to you and trusting that these yeah. things will get better. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just I just kind of feel that, you know, there's, there's so much negativity and like, I mean, uh, and I'm like you know, super cheery here. But like, I mean, the other day, like I was on a, the, the, the subway train and some guy sits, sits next to me without a mask and I get up and he says something to me and I'm like, just laid into him. I'm like, and I actually carry extra mask in my mind. Like, Do you want a mask? You know, <laughs> like, I mean, like, um, but just, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to be like, you know, you know, that for sure. But like, um, for the most part, it's like, you know, um, uh, it just helps me to be positive. Like, cause it's so easy. You know, you let that negativity get in there. It's like spreads like wildfire, you know, but uh, but also, but if you're positive, that one, you know, it's like, um, it it affects so many other things, like you know, you know being negative, you know, you start stressing, you know, you stress, you tense your muscles, right? You get in you know, the and then it releases uh, cortisol, you know, that you know that does all sorts of things to your body, you know, and so you know what de-stress, you know, I I practice, you know, I, I, well now I can make after my you know. Uh, surgery I can like do uh, yoga properly again so I'm like it, I mean anything you know whatever you know <laughs> and, and not just like the sucks the sucks the sucks you know it's like you know it's like it's all right it's all right it's like you know it's like you know um and, and I quite often I think about like someone like like Emily Dickinson uh the poet you know she would write these like amazing like poems and poetry and like uh like and most of it was done in her like little bitty tiny room in a box. And she's like looking, looking, looking and looking at a windowsill and watching a spider. It just like describes the world of the spider, right? And so, you know, I mean, I've always been kind of like a daydreamer is even as a kid, just like, uh, look, blue, 
Ooh, I'm in the middle of an ocean. Whoa, what happened? Is that a shark? Ah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but just, you know, hope, hope, you know, it's just, it, it, you, you, can't, you can't get rid of that, you know, right? That is an excellent sentiment. Thank you. I definitely think it's important that we take care of ourselves right now. Uh, my teacher, Jim Wilt, was telling me earlier this semester about something that his wife tells him. It's like when you're on a plane and that thing comes down, the oxygen thing, uh, you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of the instrument. And mm -hmm. so the, other person, the other person is the trumpet in, in our case. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. Uh, I have a question. Um, sure. What advice would you give to students and aspiring professional musicians that relate to the current situation we're in right now? Oh, I mean, uh, I, I guess my advice is like, uh, you know, uh, like stay, stay positive and like, um, and, and um, like, a, like, like play music because music heals the soul, right? That's why it still exists, you know? Why do we all get into music? Because we love it. You know, it does something that makes us feel. And even people who aren't musicians, you know, like, like, what do you do? It's like, I'm going to clean the house. I'm going to listen to some music, you know. When I'm going to work out, I'm going to listen to music, you know. I'm going to relax. I'm going to listen. You know, it's it's part of our world. And it's part of, like, art and, and, and culture. And so, you know, um, uh, like I said, you know, staying positive, right, you know. As soon as you get into that negative world, you know that's when you start having problems, right? But like staying positive, and like well, I, I can't, <laughs> I've just said this. So we, one of the uh, big things that I've been doing, you know, aside from practicing and doing all this other stuff, like at night when I walk my my girls to sleep, right? You know, I, I put my headphones on and I'm like, whoa! It's like I'm like listening to music again because it takes them about an hour or so like to fall so i got like an hour of listening he's just like it's just when i'm walking like just just at night time like it's like quiet because there's no cars usually um uh walking the the area where i walk and um just put my earphones on and like um just listening to all sorts of stuff you know from you know just scan to like janet jackson i've been like i don't know i've been on this janet jackson like kick like forgot how many hits she had and like uh but anyway and, and new artists and, and and all that good stuff so yeah so my advice is like stay positive and play music i love that and i think that's definitely what we need right now too i mean music just speaks to so many people in so many different ways it's so universal that i mean it's, it's just it's just a wonderful thing and i think that that's why like i like you were saying that the um that someone had said you know like hey keep playing the trumpet at night it, it's just some people i think that in common times we take for granted things like music and we don't think about how um it affects us whether it's live music or it's just you know popping in headphones and listening to whatever album you want i think that you know after everything shut down and live music wasn't happening and nobody was coming out with new albums or anything people kind of just stopped and said you know what ha what happened where did the industry go and i think right. that it's something that we totally took for granted until not like not us like totally because you know like <laughs> but like you know people who aren't i know i hear you who aren't like artists people who aren't mm -hmm. you know the creators of music i feel like it's just sort of to you just say you know this is what I like, but you know, what happens when the industry is non-functional like right now? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I, you know, I like totally agree. I mean, this is, um, you know, where uh, it, 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 so it, for me this time, I'm starting to appreciate things that I, that, that I didn't before, you know, like, and it's all those small things. It's like, you know what, that's kind of nice, you know, like this is, it's, it's, you know, it's all right, you know, we're going to get through this, you know, and uh, um, uh, it's, uh, you know, um, like for me, you know, a, you know, a, a blessing I'm able to listen to music, you know, like I said, you know, I've, I've had like colleagues and like, you know, like, you know, friends I've known who've uh, passed away from this, this virus, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, and you just, you, if you let it get to you, you know, it's, it'll, it'll eat you up, you know, and that's one thing I use like, you know, um, 
like like for me like growing it's like you know you just got to keep moving on you know and and, and I don't want to say like like part of life man I mean a lot of stuff can be avoided but you know but uh you know we um you know like stuff happens you know I mean and so we gotta you know uh be prepared be prepared as Phil Smith is <laughs> We definitely do. All right. So before we ask you our last question of the day, um, anybody tuning in on Facebook, if you have any questions, now would be the time to drop them in the chat just so we can make sure that we get to them. If you don't get to them and you see this video later, we can definitely pass them on and get you an answer. But again, if you're watching right now and you have anything immediately that you want to know, please drop it in the chat. Okay. And our last question to you, um, something that we've been asking everybody that has been joining us um, in these bold chats is, what does your ideal brass community look like? My ideal brass community looks like, uh, um, uh, when you say community, so it needs to look like the community, right? So communities like the whole you know should be not just one type of um uh of a demographic right so there's a festival i used to do in uh, memphis the prism that's uh you know uh in the just uh lacolian washington he, he started this festival and it was like um it's a it's a music festival for kids and they get together but it's the whole community of memphis so you have like um um kids from the inner inner city memphis playing with, with kids who go to private schools um in memphis playing in chamber music group helping each other out and learning music and enjoying music and that uh, and that culminates at the end with the orchestra gives this big concert boom and like uh, the, the parents come uh and, and it, it's a real like um like kind of like in, in my opinion, groundbreaking, like, like festival in the sense that, you know, he really, um, um, the whole entire community, the Memphis community goes there with their kids, you know, the, that's the thing to do. And so, you know, so brass, speaking brass, <clears throat> excuse me, like from a, a brass standpoint, it's like, I mean, there's, you know, wonderful brass play players all around right you know and i i i would like to see um um a lot more um like inclusion and and it all it all it all comes from things that are not like um that doesn't have like a screen or something and i hate saying like screen because everything's not orchestra you know but like you know getting invited to play with this you know brass chamber ensemble and and i think it's a um, starts with an awareness you know awareness from like everyone and not everyone's aware right and so uh it's like well not everyone's aware so we have to maybe um let's so introduce to these people who don't know it's like oh there are yeah there are women out there who play tuba <laughs> I mean, you would be surprised at like I'm just like oh, tuba. You know, I don't want a I don't want a girl playing tuba saying stuff like that. You know, it's like, like so what's what's wrong with everything you just said? There, you know, and that and and so you know, changing things like this. You know, you know, seeing like a, um, you know, you know, being able to show up, um, uh, to a like a um, a brass, uh, quintet, uh, um chamber music orchestra function and not being say oh do you play jazz <laughs> so no i'm you know i'm the i'm the classical guy you know the, uh, <laughs> sorry you know? stuff like that getting rid of these like stereotypes you know that 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 plague our industry and um and i, I think it's i think it's starting to happen in, because like the the younger generation is a little bit more hip hipper than what my generation is and twice as hip as the generation before on what you know it's like we're actually listening with the ears and not with our eyes right and so that's my ideal community is like an actual community like representative of like a, 
of everybody, you know, you know, this, uh, uh, one of the things like, um, uh, like for like New World Symphony did these like pulse concerts and it was like a direct, um, these pulse concerts are like, uh, like club concerts in the orchestra hall where they do like mix, like kind of club music, like they have sort of DJs, lights, orchestra, chamber music. It's all in new, new music. It's like kind of crazy. The concerts start at 11 p.m. And so it fits right into that club culture in Miami. It's like, that's a genius, you know, boom. That, that, that's, how you, that's how your community is, you know, boom. Part of the, it's like, that's, that's a great idea. Stuff like that, you know. And like, uh, you know, it's like getting really, uh, really, and not just like sitting and saying, all right, you know, here we go. Uh, Mozart piano concerto in a hall where we're not allowed to like, you know, cheer if they, you know, do well or and all this stuff. So it's, and changing all this stuff. And I think, you know, uh, it's, it's time for a change. We got to open how we like, um, um, like visualize like uh, music in the future. Like if we're gonna like uh, save classical music, you know, awesome i mean thank you so much for sharing that with us i mean it, again like our whole mission is to kind of you know change change the face of it and not just see the same five faces uh -huh. <laughs> anymore and i i definitely agree with those stereotypes i mean i remember um we talked to carol yansh a couple of weeks ago and you know even she said she's like why do we need to like why do we love carol she's that? awesome <laughs> it's like what like why do you need to like ask like who cares like if you're a woman to this why can't we just say to this why right do we this in right women like right <laughs> you know yeah, there's so many things that you just that just need to you know we just need to get more hip with i mean as you kind of said <laughs> right right yeah, and 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 it's <laughs> um that's why you know i you know, even when i listen to like um like we're listening to like uh, these auditions and everything's on online. And so I, yeah, even when I listen, I'll, I'll try to like, just turn my head and just listen and not you know, do this thing, you know? So yeah, that, I mean, hopefully we can, you know, it's, it's starting to, starting to happen. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> It does look like we have a couple extra questions from here in the comments. Just give me one. Okay. Uh, Stephen Cunningham asks, how do you plan to tackle diversity at UT Austin? Yeah. I mean, some of this is like, um, I can tell you some of it's like, you know, um, no, I, I, that's like one of my big things. Um, like I, um, for, for me, um, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but like, you know, this first and foremost, there's a thing in the, um, the uh, concerning the school song, you know, the school song is like, uh, um, yeah, you know, the song, the actual song was named, was uh, to a melody of a song that was already has racist connotations and the way it was presented to the school was like offensive on so many different levels. And so, you know, I've, um, I've, kind of been like um uh, I, as much as i can um uh, speaking up against this uh and for helping um uh, students you know uh, voicing their um opinions uh, against uh this song and, and changing how we you know have like traditions like you know this is a tradition this is a big thing this is we've had this song for you know over 100 years and blah 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 and it's like yeah but it's like i mean there's a reason why you know um you a lot of like um uh, you know uh, black students don't want to go to the school because they feel uncomfortable and then you're having this song this racist song that you're forcing um these student athletes to stand stand up at, at you know so things like that you know um like, well, we got to change that. Um, also, you know, like talking, just talks about how, um, like even within like a, like the music school, um, like uh, from repertoire to like curriculum, 
how can we make this more inclusive and like um and less um 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 eurocentric you know which is essentially music school in a nutshell you know we're you know uh, and i've always said you know music theory it's like like it, it makes more sense to to do the, the jazz theory when, when i in fact i mean when i look at these etudes i'm like oh okay that's like a so it's a two five one you know like a they would look at it in like jazz theory right and as opposed to like the five of five of this and you know but this is the way we, we're taught we're we have this whole system in place that we're supposed to do you know it's like and so it's i mean it, and then there's an uphill battle you know i mean i you know i <laughs> i mean at least in ut austin you know i you know and i love the, the school did so many great things you can say fantastic teachers colleagues you know uh, you know top notch but you know this university has like you know um history steep you know in the confederacy you know and that's it you know and i think it's uh i think it's on its way of changing that and there's definitely a lot of uh, um programs and um um initiatives uh set out uh to change this and like and 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 then have more inclusion of uh of, of everyone you know so um but the, yeah i mean there's some other stuff that you know that 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 i'm working on um to to change uh how it looks and um and, and it's it's gonna i mean it's not gonna be overnight nothing is but um it's, it's about you know like patience and uh and uh persistence you know but you know with that you know i mean it's not not just at ut you know it's across like the the country you know uh, uh and uh, my specialty i guess is like orchestras and like and that's like kind of like what my starting like point focus is you know it's like with the orchestras and, and classical music you know making sure you know that that's like a um inclusive um community that's great i mean again like you said things don't happen overnight i mean this is you know a process that's going to be going on for you know <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, did you have something to add? I thought I saw you on my. I did. Oh. Yeah. Well, I honestly forgot what I was gonna say. Um, but I, it's such a great question, and thank you, Stephen, for asking. Um, I think yeah, we all can sort of answer that question in our own lives too. Like what you can do right now to make your own community more diverse, and it's like whether you're a teacher, whether you're an administrator. We have the power to teach our own students to be you know finding more inclusive rep and to program things and to work with other people who don't look like them um, and so it's like we can all make little baby steps on our own um, i think it's like tempting to just be like hello big organization like why haven't you changed it and it's like well it's so hard i mean that's the reason like the election and all of this craziness happened this year it's like we're waiting for <laughs> other people to like fix it and like we also have to do it ourselves um a little bit, whatever we can, all we can, <laughs> the only thing we can do. Um, I believe there was another question and I just lost it. Rebecca, did you see it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Tyler Neufer, um, I hope I pronounced your last name right. Um, he's asking, what's something you'd recommend for an aspiring trio slash small chamber group wanting to start up in these times and do something special for audiences? A small trio. Wait, wait, wait can you, do you mind reading the question again? A small trio? Sure. Um, what's something you'd recommend for an aspiring trio slash small chamber group wanting to start up in these times and do something special for audiences? I guess the, the most, I mean, special thing and original thing you can do is write your own music, right? You know, um, just like come up with your own composition. This is another thing that I, you know, I started exploring over the, um, the quarantine um, is um, <laughs> uh, uh, what is it called on uh, um, uh, Garage Band? Just like fooling around on Garage Band, just making up, you know, um, uh, music. You know, I made up. Uh, uh, so my 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 boys, I tell them a story 
their names are, my, are my, Michael and Mark. And so I was like, we, I, we do, I do this whole uh, story thing, Ark May and Eichel May, right? <laughs> uh, a little pig Latin action. But like um, before the story starts, I, I, I do a, a theme song and it's like, a, and, and, and I actually made a theme song do, 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 with the bass, drums and, and, the, and the guitar. So, you know, why not make your own music? That's like the best thing to do. You know, you, you, you're not, you're, you, you're using all of your creative juices. You know, I think that's the best thing. And it's all original music. And people are, are, are always looking for original music. I think that's some great advice. I mean, you can write anything about anything at this point. Um, you know, there's so much, there's so much out there. There's so much inspiration. I think right now, like, I mean, given all of this, I think that this has kind of given us a sense of, you know, self. Um, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Oh yeah. All right. I think that is it. So Billy Hunter, thank you so much for being here today and chatting with us. <laughs> Um, if you are interested in playing for Billy Hunter, his masterclass is going to be on January 9th, 2021 at 1 p.m. So if you're interested, make sure you go to our website, brassoutloud.com and sign up today or, you know, soon. But <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's a conversation that we just kind of had about, um, you know, how, how to change schools and rep and what we can do in our own lives. There is actually going to be a panel discussion right after Billy's masterclass as well. Um, it's called "Looking to the Future" and about how what we can do to change um, and start, you know, gearing towards a different shift um, in not only educational communities but in our own um, worlds as well. So, you know, again, Billy Hunter, you want to play for him? You, do, I know you do. <laughs> 1 p.m. January 9th. Again. Thank you for being here today and chatting with us. And we will see you all back on Monday for Bold Chats number eight. Have a good Friday. <laughs>